Bind me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. People dying, kill me in the packing house. Even you have to win. Hey! I'm Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, remember me? All right, obviously you do, because it's my podcast. So, um, yeah, uh, this week, actually, we have amazing guests, plural. Uh, it's the guys from uh, Red Letter Media. Um, so, for you guys that don't know Red Letter Media, they did this amazing uh, um, uh, multi-part uh, Star Wars review uh, from their character, Plinkett, which, they're actually longer than the movies themselves, and I prefer them over the movies. Uh, so if you don't know them, definitely go check it out. Um, and uh, also they have this uh, show, Half in the Bag, where they do reviews of uh, modern movies. There's also a show called Review. Whatever. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to uh, tell you their whole resume. But uh, we have a great time. Uh, I hope you like talking about ghosts. Yeah, here we go. These happy days are yours and my happy days. Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not start the podcast? Get this, get this thing over with. Am I right, Jerks? That's what I'm all about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, let's we'll introduce everybody. Um, across from me is Rich Evans. Hello. Say hello. Hello, I am Rich Evans. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. Well done. And to my right, we got Jay Bomber. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Rich Evans. Yes, nice. AJ Bomber. AJ <laughs> AJ Bomber. Bomben. And then we have Mike. Stoklasa? That is absolutely correct. Nice, nice. So Stoklasa, is that a family name? Uh, it's my name. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. yes. it's, it's, it's Czech. Yes. It's Czech. Oh, I was going to guess Polish. So it, I was, it, yeah. it means drinker of beers. <laughs> it does, really? Yes, it does. Oh, my gosh. It means it's crazed alcoholic. No, it doesn't. It means... Uh, damn. So like a farmer? Or we, uh, who cares? I always thought it was a stage name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you picked. Yeah. yeah. You Mike thought it Smith. means stage in Czech? <laughs> That's exactly. I thought it was literally a stage name. Yeah, it was actually Smith. <laughs> but that was taken. I think it is kind of like a Smith in, yeah. in, Ch- in Czechoslovakia. Mm. <laughs> a common name. Common name? Yes. All right. Nice, nice. So, um, so it's Red Letter Media, people. Check this out. I'm in Milwaukee right now. I got, I got, yeah, you got, I got taken around yesterday. We had a, a grand tour of the entire city. Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it was, it was great fun. We went to the Bobblehead Museum. Mm-hmm. They were very excited to have us there because they had it. We got it right up there. Yeah. Uh, home alone Bobbleheads. <laughs> yeah, you got a Macaulay Coke in your, in your office now. Yeah, that's right. Always looking over you guys. Yeah. I asked permission if we could film there, and I said, I, I, I have uh, Macaulay Coke in the car downstairs. I said, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Nope. <laughs> Get out of here, and... you fucking weirdo. Oh, God, can I swear? Of course you can. Oh, my God. <laughs> he wants to point at all your Bobbleheads. <laughs> I think she thought I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like she's just hitting a button under her desk. <laughs> I, like, I like how they get so many crackpots, they actually have a button under their desk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They gotta be. You can't be too cautious at the Bobblehead Museum. Yeah, exactly. You never know. <laughs> well, they said there's the only Bobblehead Museum in the world. That's what they said. The I, I, I find that dubious. There's got to be another museum out there somewhere. I now, think that's the kind of thing you would just assume. Anyone who makes a Bobblehead Museum would just assume it's the only one in the yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's four. <laughs> Nobody else is gonna do this. Yeah, I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one crackpot enough to do it. Well, the weird thing is they had the like the Hall of Fame exclusive bobbleheads, which I don't think is true. Like they had that logo on them, right? That said like yeah. exclusive to the Bobblehead Museum or something. Yeah, yeah, it's on the box. Oh, yeah, it's not a sti- it's not a sticker either. It's it's on the box. Yeah. They, they manufacture them or are, are connected to the manufacturer or something. Mm. Uh, I bet you, yeah, they have a relationship with bobblehead makers at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good business. <laughs> so, Mike, you are, you you believe in ghosts. Oh, boy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> cut right to the chase. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've had my position made very clear. I, I'm an I'm a open-minded skeptic. Gotcha. Topic. Yeah, because you like watching those shows. I, I love those hunters. shows from a like a almost a, like a guilty pleasure perspective, where you know, as an editor, I watch them and I know all the tricks. Yeah, and and then I find some things fascinating, but then I'm also like, okay, how do I know? 
that that wasn't faked? Yeah. Or how do I know that they're, this person's telling the truth? You know, so it's I find it all fascinating. Kind of spoiler: like a, they're they're not telling you. Yeah, the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Rich, I've watched a lot of programming. Yeah, I know. I've you should see Mike's face. <laughs> Come on. I, I've been to many haunted locations, <laughs> and I've had zero experiences of paranormal activity. So we, we've we've actually done a ghost investigation. Yeah. Oh, never, the, never seen, never aired. We never did anything with it because everyone was too fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we didn't accomplish anything. Oh my god, that's right. We stayed in that. <laughs> he just remembered yeah. <laughs> the Brumder Mansion here in Milwaukee. Yeah, which is the not, Brumder Mansion. We filmed a, an episode of the Best of the Worst there, and while we, while we were there, we we dug out the ghost hunting equipment. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys don't have a spirit box, do you? No, no, no! I know. Got to, got to get a spirit box for you guys. The, the, the spirit box, for those who don't know, cycles through radio signals, mm-hmm. and then when someone in, in a in a van outside of the production location hits a button, <laughs> it makes magic voices <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for the ghost hunting crew. <laughs> get out, <laughs> Satan! Oh my God! Did it just say Satan? <laughs> Mm, yeah, some production assistants typing in the words that it wants it to say. So you never know. <laughs> so you never know. So so I'm open minded. <laughs> I'm, I'm open minded. Uh, which shows do you like? Which ones? Because I don't even know these shows at all. Um. Well, I, I've been a fan of Ghost Adventures for a very long time now. Um, that sounds like a cartoon from the seventies. It, it, it's a very bad title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was the name of uh, their first documentary, where where they captured. Coincidentally, they captured their most amazing evidence ever what? in their very first documentary, which got them their TV show, <laughs> uh, the full body apparition and uh, quote some, unquote evidence and some, uh, <laughs> like a brick, a brick launched itself off the floor and they had an actual scientist or a physicist come in and go, that's not, it's not attached to a string. I know, because I'm a scientist. Like, and Science you can't man. manipulate footage. And, yeah, yes, was he wearing then, a lab um, coat? That would be great. <laughs> yeah, so it was like, okay. And then they got their show on Travel Channel, and I watched it. For, I still watch it, um, although the quality has dipped quite a bit in the last 16 seasons. Um, it's like uh, one, of those, one of those shows that has like 16 seasons, like in like four years? Uh, no. The, is I it mean, like The Voice? That documentary is 2010, 2009, maybe. Okay. Um, so they've been doing it for a very long time. The best thing about Ghost Adventures is the host. It's that Zach Baggins. He's a character. Yeah. He's such a fraud. But, oh, my God. But it's, like, like hilariously so. He's, like, this this kind of jockey dude bro type guy. They, they used to be more dude bro-ish early on. They'd be like, oh, dude, dude, look out. And, and then, like, and now he's do like you feel this is cold over now, here? And now they're, like, they dress all in, like, black leather, and they look like a rock band. And it's, it's, it's taken on they, a They turn like, a bunch of Chris Angels. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's how I always felt about Art Bell. A wonderfully entertaining fraud. <laughs> <laughs> That's a skill. Yeah. Being that much of a, a blatant fraud. That takes talent. I, I didn't care whether or not Art Bell believed it was highly entertaining. Well, yeah. Our, Art Bell was always like kind of the mediator. He never really took a side, right? Or yeah, what? I mean, he had his... He, gets, or, uh, he, uh, he was presenting himself as a believer in conspiracies okay. and whatnot, but... It, it, like, like I, th- I guess I'm thinking of George Norrie m- more so. It's sort of like you can't. He's just sort of like I really don't believe you, but I'm going to let you keep talking. Yeah, kind of thing because the crackpots call in and they say the strangest <laughs> things. That's another. That's another paranormalish show that uh, Rich and which, myself. Which play. show is this? Uh, it's called Coast to Coast AM. It's on at midnight. Well, is it a radio show? A radio or show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is nice. It still on? It, it's been on for like forty. Well, our bell is dead. dead. He died. Yeah, there's, a, there's a new host who's extremely boring. Wait, and wait, I wait. wait. He should, he did he not come back as a ghost? He did not come back <laughs> no. as a ghost. That's why people keep listening in hopes that they'll hear him in the yeah. background. <laughs> that was supposedly Harry Houdini's final trick. Yes, he had a secret word. And, uh, yeah. And he, uh, he just he just died. <laughs> yeah. He never came back. So. Well, because he told his wife a secret word, and he goes, you know, if you go to a seance or something, and they say you're talking to your dead husband. Oh, I'm going yeah. to say I forget what it was, you know, but it's been revealed now. But it's something like just like you know, bread basket or something stupid yeah. like he, that. You know, yeah. He went around the last part of his life just debunking yes phony mediums. Yeah, because he was perfectly qualified. He was a magician. Yeah, he yeah. Knew, he knew all the goddamn tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from Milwaukee too. He's from Milwaukee. Really? Houdini, or Racine, or Kenosha? Oh, I didn't know that. 
Hmm. Wow. You know yeah. who's not from Milwaukee? You! You fraud! Oh, uh, yeah. Where you and f- also you. <laughs> and also Jay. None of us are from Milwaukee. Yeah, none of us are from Milwaukee. <laughs> That's crazy. How the fuck did we end up in Milwaukee? Yeah. How do we end up in a... A lifetime of bad decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Life's a series of choices, and we all made some. <laughs> Jay, Jay went to school up here, and then we came up to visit him. Yeah. And then they never left. I was I was there. I was there. <laughs> Do you remember when that happened? Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where are you from originally? Chicago suburbs. Uh, you seem like a Chicago guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hungary. Yeah. You, you, it seems like you'd be a crew <laughs> a crew member in a in a John Hughes movie. Like, yeah. Oh no, I was too poor to be in a John Hughes movie. No, 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 a crew member. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you look, totally look like a Chicago Teamster. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah the, the characters in John Hughes movies are very specific. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very specific. Uh, R- rich white kids who have no idea they're rich. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whose parents are really like terrible, actually, like accidentally terrible yeah. or just just missing altogether. Oh, yeah, that's a reoccurring theme in all. Those movies. I gotta share something. Oh, Mike's real on quick. the phone. No, I'm, I'm looking up Harry Houdini really quick. Okay. Uh, he was born in Budapest, um, and it says family lived on Appleton Street in an area that is now called Houdini Square. Uh, uh, on June 6, 1882, became American citizen. Uh, father um, f- moved the family to Milwaukee and fell into dire poverty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> so I'd share that. <laughs> Do we know where Zach Baggins is from? Zach Baggins is from Illinois, a oh, Chicago suburb. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. Just like you, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys have so much in common. <laughs> All the frauds come from Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing about Zach Baggins is his voice. Like anything he says, I just it just instantly makes me laugh. <laughs> He has like this, it's it's just like, he has, tries to have this gravitas, but he just sounds like, I don't know, like he's completely full of it. And it yeah. makes me laugh every time he opens his mouth. It's like a stage mouth. voice. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, there's pictures of him. What's it, the Zach Baggins Haunted Museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's all, if you look at like the promo pictures for it, he's wearing like a top hat and doing like these theatrical like arm movements. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, Mike, you're wearing the sweatshirt, the Zach Baggins Museum <laughs> sweatshirt didn't write today. Yes, yes. I've been there twice. Jay, Jay's been there once. I was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, horribly hung over when we went, but it was fun. Yeah. It's neat. It's a neat place. Um, uh, there's lots of artifacts and like uh, Ed Gein's cauldron is there. Yeah, that's the more stuff I'm interested in, not this paranormal stuff. But more yeah, but the like, true crime kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there's a serial serial killer section and yeah, uh, and John Wayne Gacy paintings. And Dr. Gavorkian's death van. There's yeah. there's existing John. I thought they burned all of the John Wayne Gacy paintings. They had John Wayne Gacy. No, paintings, no, right? no, no. Pogo yeah. the clown like the still exists. Clown yeah, yeah, but there was like when they executed him, there was like a big fucking bonfire. I don't know. And people were just burning his paintings. Well, maybe he made a lot of paintings. He did do a lot of paintings. Yeah, he, he, had a, he had a lot of time on his hands in prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy, also from Illinois. Right? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, of course. Well, all, the, all the crackpots from there. the Midwest. You know, yeah. <laughs> I know they did a movie about John Wayne Gacy starring uh, Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Really? That's like, perfect. Yeah. That's that's the, that actually casting. seems pretty apt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. I'm sure it's terrible, but. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Gacy versus Dahmer movie? No, no. That's more recent. Okay. This was like in the early 2000s. There was all these direct to video serial killer movies. Like there was that. There was a Ted Bundy movie. Um, I think there was a B. What is it? BTK Killer, right? Mm-hmm. I think there was one of those. It's like this weird little trend. Direct to video serial killer movies. Yeah. <laughs> they, wait, they, uh, I just want to go back. There was a Dahmer versus Gacy movie. Yeah. Like a we B have movie. It. We have the DVD. We haven't watched it. But it's like a B movie kind of like. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's incredibly tasteful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sure. I'm sure it's very treat good. the subject matter with the respect. With the respect and, and, and the vi- to the victims deserves. and everything. Yeah. 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 Considering their mutual interests, they should have teamed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those things where they start out fighting and then they then and it tr- turns into like a road trip movie or yeah, something. Yeah, like, like buddy a, comedy. Yeah, buddy comedy. <laughs> you kill him, I'll eat him. That's, that's the tagline. <laughs> they high five each other. That's the that's the trailer line right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right at the end of the trailer. Yeah, you found it right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, D- Dahmer, there's another person from uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a, there's a bunch yeah. of gems. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just something Illinois, about the Midwest. Illinois yeah. and uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Ed, Ed Gein is from Wisconsin, too. Yeah. So many serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> and rich. And rich. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what I do? I mean, that's literally true. There are serial, <laughs> serial killers in Wisconsin <laughs> and rich. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the implication is supposed to be. <laughs> don't look at my basement. 
Don't look at my basement. Don't look at my basement. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Don't you hurt my dog. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Rich, I, I hear you have a, a, a ghost story. No, of some I sort? don't have a ghost story because ghosts don't exist. <laughs> it's an anti-ghost story. I yeah. don't know this story. I might mention it the other day. And yeah, yeah. And you were like, save it for the podcast. Uh, so. Yeah, okay. Well, here. If you're comfortable. Yeah, only if you're comfortable. <laughs> here's here's my not a ghost story because ghosts don't exist. Um, a- after my grandmother had passed, uh, I was I was still living in her house, but like. We're just you know throwing stuff out constantly. She was basically a hoarder, yeah. and we were uh, burning all of her things. We destroyed her piano, <laughs> throwing all of her trash, her life possessions in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would anger any ghost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> starting a dumpster fire with other worldly possessions. Right. Yeah, oh, she oh. was watching you from beyond the grave as you smashed her piano in a monkey costume. <laughs> 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 Is this, is this actually true? This is true. You got into a monkey costume and, and smashed it in your grandma's piano? Oh, yeah. No, this is this footage. <laughs> okay, here's... All right, here's, that's an entirely different story. <laughs> and now i got to tell that one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, You're stuck. When, when I was getting rid of all this crap from my grandmother's house, I, I, I asked Mike to help me. And, and Mike helped me take out my grandmother's old uh, player piano by having me dress up in a monkey costume, and then he just filmed me while I tried to get it out. No. Well, sort of, sort of. It, it weighed like like 700 pounds. I mean, it was huge and big and heavy, and it was like, okay, do we lift it down these stairs, or do we break it into lots of little pieces? Because we're just going to throw it out. So I was like, while we're breaking it, let's make a little short movie. And Rich so you're monkey. Monkey. You break in this monkey apart. suit, monkey. You, you break that apart with a hammer in a monkey suit in this fucking <laughs> a, a ninety degree July weather, and I'm gonna film it. There was no air, working air Alex, conditioning. Thanks for your help, Mike. <laughs> thanks for helping me move. I remember, I, remember we got, I remember we got like the heaviest part, like the soundboard or whatever the fuck it is. If the second the second that ended up out on the porch, Mike had to go. <laughs> the, second, the second it was out the door, so it's just on the porch. Mike's like, I gotta go. I got, Bye, I, got, I got my footage. I got my footage. You in a monkey suit. <laughs> Get up the piano, jackass. The best part of that little video, I, I guess, is quite the sidetrack here, but uh, I was. <laughs> wearing a t-shirt and I was just sweating and he's wearing clothes and a monkey costume <laughs> at some point you just like snap yeah, and yeah. he just like starts screaming at me and that's all I just kept filming him oh yeah are uh, you like trying to get out of the costume like, but it was like t- duct taped or oh, something yeah. in the back of it <laughs> so you couldn't get out there was no zipper in the back so I wrapped him with electrical tape <laughs> and he almost died <laughs> those are good times you fucking asshole the salad days <laughs> I'm sweating my ass off this monkey suit. <laughs> For your stupid monkey man projects. I remember that. So I'm, I'm living in this house. Okay. And um, I, I was basically, I was just sleeping on the couch. Because I, I was fine with that. But I had recently uh, started going out with my, my current fiance. And uh, she was staying over that uh, one night. And it's like, like we don't want to share a damn couch. And... Uh, there's my grandmother's old room. It's still got the bed in it. It's grandmother's bed. Yeah, yeah, grandma's bed. Was that the, like, wasn't like gold or something, the bed? Everything was gold. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> so you and your girlfriend climb into your dead grandmother's bed. Yes. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Go on. <laughs> we, 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 we slept in that bed that night. Not And uh, uh, we both had dreams of my grandmother being angry and demonic. Covered with blood. No, she had black eyes. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if she had black eyes in Karen's dream. Okay. But she did in mine. And you know what? That was a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> because my grandmother had recently died, and we were sleeping on her bed, and it was in our minds. That's the question. <laughs> and the answer is, it was a coincidence. <laughs> 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 But similar dreams, angry, angry grandma. Was, was, it, was, it, was it scary? Was it scary? It sure, it was scary. It was a nightmare. Oh, oh okay. Well, you said dream. Well, Karen's was also a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Well, usually, I, I just you know when I said demonic, I thought that was just implied. 
Look you don't okay. usually you don't usually have a pleasant dream about your demonic grandmother. <laughs> well, you never know. She might have pie. <laughs> she might have just been like a little upset in Karen's dream. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And yours is she's the devil. But <laughs> so I, I always found that story interesting. Well, yeah, but it's, I know. it's like it, it was both on both of your minds, and and you both had the same dream because you're kind of thinking this is kind of weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, or from beyond, her spirit said, "Get out of my bed." In her own Did you ever sleep life? in her bed again? No. Oh. Why? Why? If it was just a coincidence, why would you not sleep in her bed? <laughs> it was, uh, for one, it was just weird. <laughs> like we did this for practical reasons. Like she didn't want to. We didn't want to both sleep on the damn like couch and be falling off. So it's like, well, let's just here tonight. Let's sleep in the damn bed. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I won't press you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, back to the monkey suit. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done anything with the monkey man footage? Oh, yeah. Yeah? We've made many monkey man films. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's like an ongoing project. It, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's stopped. It's it's ceased. Yeah. Um, well, we filmed something with you in the monkey man costume like a year or two ago for the end of A Best of the Worst. Do you remember I, that? I, we did like I don't, two, rem- oh, I don't the remember. The 2001 one, parody. Yeah. Where you're like beating the tapes with a bone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's the same suit. Once in a while. The same suit. Yeah, uh, I think so. Wait, no, wait, no. I think, I think at some point we had to get a new one. I think the body is the same, but it's different head or something. I feel like some of it's still the original suit. Yeah, the the first one we made was called Monkey Man Gets His, right? Yeah, and I, it had it had your grandma in it. Um, and uh, <laughs> Mike, yeah. she Mike, must have been so proud. <laughs> for the record, Mike has a fascination with my family and childhood, <laughs> like an, an unhealthy fixation. He would put my grandmother in in our little high school movies whenever he could. She she was she was so weird, <laughs> <laughs> but she was a very lovely lady. But she was weird, <laughs> just super weird. Yeah. Um, but she had a like a funny voice, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I recorded her saying like all these like bizarre words, and I would just kind of loop it in the background and uh, do stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. So it seems like you're always like been filming, and you, like you keep like every stitch of everything. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You got like closets of VHSs and yeah, like yeah, All eight millimeter. Did you ever do any yeah. snuff films? Yeah. Snuff films? Yeah, yeah. Any no. of those? Oh, okay, just check. <laughs> Not intentionally. Yeah. Not intentionally. No. That that's paid off though. Holding on to weird old artifacts that led to the Dick the Birthday Boy pictures. Yes. Yes. I actually wanted to bring that up. So Dick the Birthday Boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Explain to me. Uh, explain to me what happened. <laughs> Do you, do you remember that well, magical day? Do we, no? do we need to explain the damn photo first? Uh, sure. You think I think we should for the audience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's well, just... there's probably a lot of people that are familiar with the photo that don't know the that it has any connection to us or anything. Yeah, because it was on Ellen. That's yeah. It yeah. showed up on Ellen. Like it's just if you, I, I don't even remember what is it you Google like. It Dick shows the up birthday on, like, boy. Uh, Showbiz oh, no. Pizza Bear. Showbiz Pizza Bear. It show, it's like the first thing that shows up, and it was on like uh, what's that? Oh, um, that subreddit for like cursed photos or cursed, something. Cursed images and also awkward family photos. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. Um, not in one of their printing printed cards, yeah. uh, but on their website. I always check. So it's it's <laughs> it's taken on a life of its own. Yes. So when, wh- when when I was a kid, yeah. The 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 standard operating procedure for birthdays for me and my siblings was to go to the local Showbiz Pizza. And if you don't know what Showbiz Pizza is, it was basically the uh, the precursor to Chuck E. Cheese. I was going to say it sounds like a Chuck E. Cheese esque yeah. thing. Yeah. And in, instead of a giant rat, they had a a Billy Bob the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> and get a band. The yeah, Billy Bob explosion. the Bear and the Rock of Fire Explosion Band. Yeah. But but you know there'd be a guy in the Billy Bear costume who'd walk around and interact with the children. And so there is a Polaroid photo of me on my. How old was I in that photo? Like probably five, five, five to seven years old, whatever. At at Showbiz Pizza on my birthday, photo with me and Billy Bob the Bear, <laughs> and I am wearing a T-shirt that says "Dick the Birthday Boy." No For the comma. record, I have never gotten a straight answer from any of my no living comma. relatives. Why they made me wear a shirt that says Dick the Birthday Boy. I have no fucking idea who thought that was a good idea. If it was done deliberately or ignorantly, I don't know. Uh, uh, most likely ignorantly. Yeah. Just, it's just, oh, it's Dick the Birthday Boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not thinking to put the, right. a comma in there. That it's now it's now a phrase or a, a, an action, action phrase. <laughs> It's 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 hypothetically possible that one of my uncles was just like snickering at everyone else behind their back. I got this shirt. <laughs> no, that's hypothetically possible. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. That's a pretty horrible thing to do maliciously to a five-year-old. Yeah, that's that's yeah. But the the actual Polaroid when after your grandma died and I was helping Rich clean all the garbage out of his house, you were throwing out photos. Yeah, uh, like family photos in a garbage can. <laughs> I, I saw that one. You heartless you, bastard. I am not a sentimental person, and I was just kind of done with that phase of my sure, life. Sure, sure. But I saw that, and a handful of others from that same birthday party, and a whole bunch of other Christmas photos, and you opening up like Star Wars toys, and I'm like, Rich, you can't throw all these out. And I just took them. <laughs> kept and them. Did, you, did you tell? Did you, you tell you Rich s- that you did that, or you just like just did you? Just, I had no idea. I don't yeah. remember. I was I completely so. yeah. shocked. No, I think I just stole it. Yeah, no. <laughs> 20, 20 years later, when you sprung that on me, I was completely shocked. Yeah. The, the, the long game. Think about the long game. <laughs> what happened to those other Polaroids? Because I remember you had them back I, when we I, shot that episode. I have them somewhere. They're somewhere. And I'm not sure. Oh. But Mike is holding my family photos hostage Yes, somewhere. I was going to say. Yeah, he's going he's to all of a sudden pull out another one. Yeah. But yeah, but the picture ended up on Ellen. It ended up all over the place. Look yeah. at it. Because I remember, I remember you had it on one of your shows, and then I remember seeing the Ellen thing. I'm like, I, yeah. well, that's what it's started. fucking Rich I, Evans. I, I think at this point, it's it's gotten large enough where people think that the, that episode where we show the photo is a reference to the existing. And it's like, photo. no, that came first. No, it didn't. It was nowhere on the internet until that episode. <laughs> we have a high res scan of it somewhere, and that's I think all the ones <laughs> a that high res scan of all Polaroid. the ones that are floating around the internet are just like a screen grab from that episode. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Well, we've, we've got the actual Polaroid frame. Yeah. We got it framed on the it's, wall. It's right over there. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, on the, on the hall. yeah, yeah. I want to see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. You know? Just don't take it. Don't know, I won't, I won't, I won't, we not. gotta put that thing in a safe. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta insure it. <laughs> yes, yes. Why don't you make both make uh, plans to what to do with my personal <laughs> items? Hey, you threw it. You threw it away, man. <laughs> so you get. Yeah. Once it's in the trash, it's it's, uh, it's fair public game. domain. Right? Yeah, Isn't yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair game. <laughs> So you guys uh, also do like features and things like that. Space Cop, of course. How many features have you made, like for yourself, all in house kind of thing? Uh, well, I mean, we used to do like amateur movies and stuff. We yeah, did, we did not crap when we were in high school. I think yeah. crap is the appropriate. It seems oh, like yeah. you guys were always doing stuff. Yeah. The, the first yeah. kind of like, I guess, real feature would probably be the oranges movie that you guys did. Yeah, would you even consider that a real feature? Uh, it's like really. proto. It's proto real. If it's, if it's like yeah. seventy minutes or more, it's a feature. Oh, we, we've been doing that since. Oh yeah, yeah, high school. Yeah, I mean, like some sixty minutes, like some kind of horror yeah, movie. Yeah, like but that's junk. Yeah, the the, the ones where we tried to be more professional or yeah, or, that or the recovered probably was the after because yeah. like oranges like had some kind of distribution and then so did the recovered. Yeah, and then after that. I think we did Feeding that Frenzy. That was Feeding Frenzy, yeah. And that, that was sort of like where we were just self-distributing our own movies. Like yeah. Like deal with the... Get, get your posters it. made and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And pre- press DVDs and just sell them ourselves. Mm-hmm. Out of the back of a van. A, cr- of, a creepy van. Trunk. <laughs> uh, we sold them out of the back of a website. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a creepy website. <laughs> if you want to order this movie, you got to go to this... This filthy website. Yeah, meet me in this alley. <laughs> this nasty angel fire website. <laughs> GeoCities. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, GeoCities. <laughs> Gifts. <laughs> what did you say? Gifts. Gifts. <laughs> Dripping blood bar. <laughs> Buy a horror movie. <laughs> Look at this blood bar. Click on the link over the dripping blood bar. <laughs> Click on the link. The website's a part of a web ring. Oh. <laughs> Remember web ring? Holy cow. Yeah. We're wow. so old. <laughs> so, is anything like an O-ring? Uh, um, and you, you guys have been doing Half in the Bag, what, since like 2010, 2011? 11, 11 yeah. I think. Yeah, something like that, eight yeah, years. Yeah. How many yeah. episodes are you in right now? Hundred and seventy. <laughs> I think it's hundred and forty something. I think. Is it? I think so. Okay, I thought it was hundred and sixty eight. <laughs> That's Somewhere a really that exact range. number, yeah. I More than a hundred, less than two hundred. I wanted to say, Jay, uh if we had a joke like eight years ago, seven years ago, where we had a season one 
of half in the bag and that was like 10 episodes and then we said now it's time for season two and it's, it's been ever since and, and it's been ever since and i wanted to do like now season two is just wrapping up it was like 140 episodes long now we're starting season three yeah, yeah. No season one's just a 10 episode dvd and like yo you gotta order like yeah, season two it's a set reason. i think yeah that's right i think we called it like a season one because we were going to take like a couple weeks off like a month off for making episodes or something yeah. so we're like that'll be the break and yeah. then when we come back it'll be season two was that was that more Make like take time out to make feeding frenzy. Was that what was going on, or mm-hmm. no. no feeding frenzy was before? That was, oh, that's right. The bag. Jesus, oh my god, that was before Mr. Plinkett Star Wars review. Well, it was shot before it, but then shot we finished before, it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, was, that was yeah. Long. I remember. I remember coming up to film feeding frenzy and talking with you about yeah the Phantom Menace review. Well, there was the there was the Star Trek reviews before that. Yeah, yeah. But do you guys have any lost episodes? Like something that you filmed and just never aired for one reason or another. There's a uh, best of the, of the worst episode, right? Yeah, there was a best of the worst shoot that was just like miserable, um, and we got nothing from it, so we canned it. What, was it was just because you were just generally miserable, or was it, was it the, <laughs> the material you watched? So there was there yeah. was both. There was nothing. There was yeah. nothing to work with. And now people are going to clamor to see this episode, even though nope. we didn't put it out there because it was the worst thing. It's, it's yeah. locked up in that Disney vault. So it, yeah. was, it was the worst of the best of the worst. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, that's funny, too, when people say, like, I'd love to see just all the raw screening room footage. It's like, no, half it's us sitting there just watching it's, the movie. Yeah, just eight hours of yeah. that. You know, this yeah. is why editing exists. Like, so we have a marathon today because I, I did it last time. And I, yeah, I yeah. just remember it's like, yeah. Usually ever since I got here, you guys were just like, okay, be ready. Yeah. yeah be ready we, for yeah, Wednesday. We, we prepare people. This yes. It's going to be a long day. Mm-hmm. You'll probably be miserable. You got to pace yourself. Got to pace Never yourself. Got to come back. Mm-hmm. It, it works, though, because after six hours of movies. You're like, loony. You're a little slap happy when it comes when it gets to the, the discussion. discussion yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, you don't want to do it the next day. You're fresh. I think fresh the first few episodes we did do it. We did watched we? the movies and we filmed the discussion the next day. We did. I think so. Oh, early on. I don't one or two oh, is that why they were so terrible? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, yes. Yes. That's a fact. Well, I think the first episode is only like 20 some minutes long. Like it's less than half an hour, which mm-hmm. blows my mind. Because now they're able to yeah, do that. Yeah, because now they're upwards of like, what, an hour 20 sometimes? Like, yeah, yeah, we try to keep it around an hour. Yeah. We, we trim it down as much as we can. Mm-hmm. But it always just, yeah, you trim the discussion down to like, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes, and then you start dropping in clips, and it just keeps growing. Mm-hmm. It's a nightmare. Every episode is a nightmare to edit. Yeah, because you have the eight hours of just raw footage of just recording of yeah. people. And you got to find like the funniest 15 minutes yeah. <laughs> out of yeah. eight hours. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you watch the screening room footage, or at least you used to. And then kind of like... Oh, I used to go through it and make little markers yeah. of like when something... But I don't do that anymore. That's just too daunting. Do you just take like mental notes now? Or like, I just, yeah, I mean, you kind of remember most of the discussion. remember some of the really funny parts. Or most of the parts. screening yeah. footage, yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember when everyone laughed kind of yeah. thing. Okay. I mean, that's easy to find when you scrub through the timeline. Yeah. Like, oh, here's a moment where the... You, know, you can like, just look at the volume. Like, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly. You can You'll see the, the wave, wave file. Wave file and, and you can tell where Rich's laugh is. Something funny happened here. That's when it's in the red. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Plinkett reviews earlier, and uh, I found out yesterday that Rich Evans, you were the original Plinkett, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a. Well, it was the. It was the. The Olsen twins. It was. A, was it a. It was a college project of yours, right? Yes. Yes. So that was a right. long time ago. <laughs> so yes. long. Yes. Yeah. It was a very long time ago. <laughs> it was like a final video for like a uh, filmmaking class of some kind, and. It was all these like artistic, like uh, this lady on the beach walking, and I just turned in this garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was, it was the, so much fun. What was the original concept? I know we we were digging around with like children's films because we thought they were hysterical. Yeah, it was just to integrate you with multiple kids movies and we got a couple like the kid with the magic guitar yeah and, and <laughs> that was, that was uh, Little Ghost <laughs> you remember the name of the movie? I remember the name of the movie it was wow. Little Ghost and so there's there's one part where Rich is like kind of singing along and then he makes the guitar fly and hit you right in the well, crotch the, the ghost makes like the guitar fly like the other side of the room <laughs> but we edited so like the guitar flies into my face yes yes <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps hitting you. Um, but but the majority of the stuff that was the funniest was Mr. Plinkett well, because, well, okay, reacting well, with the Olsen twins. There's an Olsen twins movie, and they're on the phone. It's like the Olsen twins they're detective detectives, agency. Yeah. And they're on the phone talking to somebody called Mr. Plinkett. No, no, it was Plinkus. Yeah, yeah I know it was Plinkus, but we, we thought it was Plinkett. And that's why Mr. <laughs> Plinkett is Mr. Plinkett. <laughs> And then I we just filmed so. filmed the other end, you know. We took out Mr. Plinkus, then we replaced it with me. And I was trying to be as bizarre as possible, <laughs> and that's 
that's how it happened. You're crank calling the Olsen twins in their movie. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> you were asking them for help. They had a detective agency. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find my pills. Right, right. <laughs> and, then, and then you trash your own kitchen for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, something's wrong with the cabinet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're like saying that the cabinet's faulty or something. Well, I think when I was just wheeling around with the wheelchair, I think just like oh, the, the door, the the, I broke the cabinet. The door started coming out. It's like, ah, I'll just run with it. <laughs> My camera's broke. <laughs> was it scripted or were you just riffing? I yeah, was, probably just riffing. Yeah. <laughs> some of the back and forth was like, okay, you should respond to this. We had we had yeah. some like lines, yeah, I'm uh, sure, yeah. But uh yeah, that was just and that was just sort of the funny voice we did, like rah, 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 just making fun of stuff. And, uh-huh. Sort of evolved. And then, yeah, did it kind of keep going from there? Or, like, was there something in between that and, like, the Star Trek reviews? I don't, I don't or think, we, so. I think we, made a, we made the cleaning lady. Oh, the cleaning lady, yeah. Which, <laughs> it's the cleaning lady. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Plinkett hires somebody it? to clean his house. He hired, also played he, by you. Which is also played by me. It was just he, another short we did. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was supposed to hire a cleaning lady, and you were just, like, in a, a person that wandered out of an insane asylum. And then you just go in his basement and just start knocking things over <laughs> and breaking things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, is that, oh, no, that's the Olsen Twins one, when you go down the stairs in a wheelchair. Yeah. Okay, I just remember that. Was, and that was that was filmed, or was that just like audio? That was real. Oh yeah, he, and, he, and he fell out of the wheelchair. <laughs> That's why Rich has a bad back. Oh, <laughs> That's why. Stunts. Yeah, because you like doing Pratt falls. Yeah, I, yeah, I you, can't, like the, you like the physical comedy. I can't do that anymore. Oh God, and I've ruined, I've ruined my body. <laughs> I, just, I ruined myself filming our stupid high school shorts. It was such a waste. You're like an ex NFL player without any money. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Yeah, you sort of go fund me for, for a new hip. You know, yeah. <laughs> Flex goal. I, I really could use a new pack. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, so yeah, uh, we're doing best of the worst. Uh, well, okay, I know we're doing roar, roar. Yeah, roar, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Why don't we don't have to do? What what are, what are the other ones we're watching again? Uh, we're watching Hawk Jones, which is like an action movie starring nothing but children <laughs> playing the adult roles. I can't wait. Playing cops and burglars and, I guess, lots of children shooting at each other. I can't wait. <laughs> um, I think it's shot on video. Um, and then Winter Beasts, which is about a, a monster totem pole, I think. <laughs> and that's been on, like, the wheel or the – I know I've heard of it. Like, it's been on the wheel yeah, or the plinket that, that one's kind of been, like, on the cusp of being watched many times. Mm-hmm. And we're just finally going to tear off that band-aid. We're just going to do yeah, it. Just, just do it. Yeah. Well, we always do that. We'll have like a move, like Roar is another one where we're like, we need to do something special with this. We need to set this aside. And then we just never do it. So we're like, we need to just watch it. Yeah. Just we're, get it. Otherwise, yeah. we're just going to keep putting it on. <laughs> just watch it. Are you tired of diets and exercise programs that don't work? Yes. Do you find that no matter what you do, you just never find the time? Yes. Wouldn't you love to look in the mirror and not hate what you see? Yes. Have you tried not giving a fuck? Shut up! With not giving a fuck, there are no diets to follow, no special exercises. Booyah! I mean, yes, if you're eating pizza at a desk for 12 hours a day, you should maybe consider some small lifestyle changes so you don't die. What? But if this is just about how you look, not giving a fuck is so easy. How, baby? It requires you to do literally nothing. I'm doing it right now. Hooray! Try not giving a fuck today, because no matter what society tells you about how you should feel about how you look, nobody who matters gives a fuck. And uh, um, speaking of the wheel and all that stuff, Rich, you actually build a lot of the, 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 those devices. Like yes. you know, The wheel is like a, like a big old lazy Susan, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Lazy Susan uh, mounted to a table I found at the thrift store. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> you, you like working with wood? I, I, you know what? I would have loved to have been a carpenter. Yeah. If uh, I weren't, if I weren't being made fun of by my friends on camera, <laughs> I'd have become a carpenter. <laughs> I made a poor choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's your calling. <laughs> I did. I missed my calling. I, I've always enjoyed building the things that we have. Yeah, I mean, some of them are impressive. That Plinkett board is actually, like, it's quite massive. Yeah. How long did it take you? Oh, God. Well, I had to, I had to remake it once. 
I, I, we, it, oh, yeah. The first it, one was it, too heavy, right? Well, yeah. okay. The first, Mike wanted a a a, a plinketo board. A a a, 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 a what's, what's it called? Plinko. A plinko from yeah. the Price is Right. And you bought. You went out and bought four, um, like four by four boards from a Home Depot. And you yeah, use this as the base. You bought. You bought something, and they were comically heavy. Mm. And so basically, the the structural supports behind the plinketo board. So, so you didn't like Mike's wood. No, I hated Mike's wood. Mike's wood was too hard. <laughs> was this too, too, too heavy? Too hard? Too heavy. That was I, too thick. <laughs> way, way, way too. Heavy. You couldn't handle all of it. I couldn't handle. Couldn't handle the weight of Mike's wood. Okay. Okay. So you cha- you, so you switch over to your I own had, wood. I had to I basically. I had to build. I had to build a giant framework just to contain the weight of Mike's wood. <laughs> all right, all right. And it was just it just fell right over. So so you switch over to your own wood. I had to I had to go get my wood, which is considerably you know lighter, smaller, smaller and lighter. Not as thick. <laughs> <laughs> Much thinner. <laughs> this is why the 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 sides on the plank out of board. That's just foam. It's really it's just styrofoam on both sides. Well, you had some issues too with dropping your balls. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. They, they didn't quite like the, the bounce balls around wouldn't properly. bounce around. Yeah. The, all, all the little pricks all <laughs> over it. <laughs> thing, and you drop your balls all over it. It's in quite work. People who don't know us and don't know what the fuck the plinketto board is are horribly, horribly yeah. confused right now. So the balls would drop unevenly. They were uneven balls? At first you had a disc. And then well, it was a trial and error, basically. Yeah, because it, it was, it was based more on the actual, like, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, pl- like a uh, Plinko board. Yeah, yeah. it was going to be like a hockey puck. I actually got a hockey puck, and you'd drop it down, and it would just, like, hit one peg and stop. <laughs> I think, because yeah, you actually, yeah, I think early on it was a hockey. I think, I, I think, I I think it, you actually kept that in when it, yeah, like, it just stopped. It, it would fuck Is up it a puck in the first episode? I, Did we? I think I so. Yeah. I think I know, so, I yeah. Think, yeah, I think, it, didn't we have, like, a, like a light? Like, yeah. you press the button, and it lit up. And, and it was kind of a it. disc shape. Yeah. I think we dropped that the first episode. We, we tried a handful of different things, and you know, but nothing, Rich, but nothing Rich, would quite work. But, Rich, right. but except for Rich's ball, R- Rich's balls eventually worked. <laughs> hit every we have hit ball, every prick right? on the way down. You're prick. talking about the blue balls, right? The blue balls. They're blue. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, sex joke. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is incredibly low hanging fruit. Yeah, but it's, that's, speaking that's of my balls, back. this is incredibly <laughs> low-hanging fruit. Let's talk more about your balls and your wood. <laughs> so, uh, I guess what like, half in the bag is one of those things where you just pretty much were just going to review things that were currently out, as opposed to. You know, I, just... I think the original goal was to get them out quicker than the Plinket reviews, right? Yeah, because those seemed really time-consuming. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, and it was more the idea of just doing, like, current release movies. and Yeah, you know. being more yeah. topical. Yes, yeah. Because we had lots of, like, we are getting more subscribers, and when's your next video? When's your next video? And this is, well, we should come up with, like, a thing to do quicker. Yeah. And then we came up with this, with this premise, and we called it Half in the Bag, kind of thinking, like, maybe we'll do other things on the show. Like, we could expand them. It, it, it wouldn't just be movies. Like yeah, it would just reviews. be, like, you could just expand the format. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, to, to whatever we want, because we don't want to call it, like, movie time. Right. Mike and Jay or something, where we were, like, pigeonholed into reviewing movies. But we never, ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you just create more shows. Yeah. That's what we've done. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah about different things. Just spin it off. movie related. They're all movie related, but, yeah. Do you remember the first episode we shot it once before we even had a premise? We had the Plinket house set, but we weren't yes. like VCR repairmen. We were just in Plinket's house for no reason. It was just a backdrop. Yeah, you, guys already, yeah. you had the set. For yeah. people who don't know what half of the bag is, what is what is the premise? What is the what is the show? <laughs> oh, do we got a wait, wait? Wait, you don't know? <laughs> I, I know. I don't know. What is this? <laughs> Explain it to Rich Evans. <laughs> uh, I, I just have to assume a lot of people listening to this don't know who the oh. fuck we are. The the Mister Plinket character was a thing, so it was like I think originally we wanted to have rich in the background as Plinkett just kind of in shadow and you were going to do the voice and right? I was going to do the voice yeah. and it was just going to be a thing that's in the background because it's like somewhat related to the Star Wars Star Trek reviews and we were just Mike and Jay talking about movies and then the idea came about at some point to have a storyline and we're just like fuck it let's have rich evans yeah we can't um, we can't do like storylines and skits and stuff if we have Plinkett in shadow in the all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah it's it and it would just take forever yeah was that the first episode when he kind of walks in with the walker and falls down? Like, I think was, he comes in the house in a wheelchair, and yeah, and he falls. And he tries to get into his recliner, and he keeps falling over. Is that the first over. episode? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It was like Sucker Punch or something like that? 
No, the first one was two Adjustment movies that everybody's Bureau. forgotten about. Adjustment, Adjustment Bureau and, Bureau. Oh, and uh, gosh. Drive, Drive Angry, Angry? With Nicolas yes. Cage. Oh my goodness! Yeah, wow, a couple a couple of gems there. Let's yeah. Well, that's it's, the show's kind of changed over time. Where now it's like, what are bigger <laughs> movies that we have things to say about? We're not just going to mm. do a movie because it's new. Yeah, I, I, like, I, you have things to say about Aquaman even before it comes out, kind yeah. of thing. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the big like obviously the like uh, you know Avengers Endgame or something like things that a lot of people are discussing. Not just whatever random movie comes out that week, which is kind of what it was in the earlier days. Yeah, and you guys just sit, sit around and you just, just talk shit <laughs> about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Like, I mean, how much footage do you like shoot per episode? Like, you know, how much of it, like, do you cut? Like, that kind of thing. Like, I mean, do you talk for like an hour and a half and then just now use like 45 do. minutes? Yeah. We The first episode was like 12 minutes long. <laughs> The first episode, yeah. It's like <laughs> it was two, really short. two movies discussed over the course of like less than 15 minutes, I think, <laughs> which is insane to think about now. <laughs> but we'll, we'll chat for an hour plus. Mm. An hour, sometimes an hour and a half. And then, yeah, most of that will get cut out. So we'll go on tangents and sometimes we'll make something of those tangents and separate little videos and yeah. whatnot. But yeah, that's, that's how I learned about your love of ghosts. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like a 10, 15 minute just tangent about, uh, uh, about ghost Malone. A ghost Malone. Yeah. <laughs> I love ghosts. <laughs> he opened the what box? The Dibbit box. The Dibbit box. It's in the it's in the Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. It's one of the most famous haunted artifacts. Yeah, and you open the box, bad things happen. Y- y- well, yes, people die. Oh, except for for Toast Malone. Uh, uh, to- Toast Malone. Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. well, the, the, it's funny. The if we're back to paranormal stuff, the, we I think we talked about the the uh, Zach Baggins Haunted Museum live. Where they did a live event and it was oh, like a disaster. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Where the 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 they brought in? Did they bring in a rabbi or they something? They brought in a rabbi. <laughs> and he's like, this whole show is bullshit. Because the Debick box was owned by like a, a a woman who survived the Holocaust, and and she kept her like personal items in there, and then she died. I, I, there's a story behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the guy, <laughs> a Jewish who, story, obviously. He's got to bring in a rabbi. Some somehow it became haunted. Uh, somebody owned it. I, I don't know. And put, somehow put, it became haunted. Put, 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 <laughs> that's that's a wonderful sentence. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. It got haunted. <laughs> there's a history behind the Divic box. I don't know at all. I had this sandwich. Somehow it became haunted. <laughs> it's just haunted now. <laughs> there's a story. I don't know it offhand. But. Well, they made a movie about the Divic box yes. called, like, The Possessed or The Possessed. Uh, or something the guy buried it in his backyard for like 10 years because everyone who kept, kept touching it would die yeah. same that's, thing happened that's, with ed that, gein's cauldron by the way what happened uh well, they had to move it out of ed gein's like barn yeah. and like there were like six men that had to move it and every one of them died within like six months of moving it and they're oh. all varying ages or something crazy i was gonna say like how that. old were they <laughs> yeah, no, they, they all had tuberculosis already all yeah. of, so, <laughs> similar with the divic box if you open it up bad things happen yeah. and then on a show they were like that was the big like end event of of the the haunted live was like and he's like i'm gonna open it nope ah uh, ah uh, nope 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 uh, and then he, he he couldn't muster the courage. <laughs> but then somehow him and Post Malone were playing in their museum, and there's like a security footage of Post Malone's like dancing, and they open up the divot box, <laughs> and, and they're like laughing and, in a drunken rage, <laughs> drunken party. I'm like, well, Let's this just wasn't do part it. of the show. He's like, Post Malone wanted to come over and run around my haunted museum. <laughs> and he to open the How can box. you say no? Yeah. <laughs> and then. Um, after Post Malone opened the Dybbuk box, he was almost killed like three different times unrelatedly. His plane able- crashed. Mm. The wheels fell off his plane. <laughs> uh, he got in a car accident, uh, miraculously survived all within like weeks of opening up the Dybbuk box. There is proof. The <laughs> there's a, yeah, witch. Rich Evans, there's that's, your fucking that's proof. That's prove that, <laughs> Mr. Coincidence. Mr. Haunted Sandwich. That's not, <laughs> that's not proof, though. That's just things that happened. Um, I don't. I don't really think it's proof. <laughs> I find these would you would you open the divot box though? I don't know that I believe you when you say that, Mike. <laughs> would you open the divot box? Yeah. Would you open it? Come on, I, would you? Answer <laughs> okay, the question, Claire. Because we got it right here. <laughs> oh my God! It's, it's that bag and it's got the divot box. Um, it's Post Malone's here too. <laughs> to err on the side of caution, I would not. 
Oh, okay. Just the one percent chance. Mm-hmm. I would walk open outside. the fuck out of that I, box. I, I, I drop a I, deuce I, in it. <laughs> like, would you put your balls in the dip? I, I would dip my balls in the dip. <laughs> Is that your challenge to Zach Baggins? Yeah. Zach Baggins, let me into your haunted museum. I'll dip my balls in <laughs> your divot box. It's highly offensive. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start booking the trip right now. Yeah. Let's get out there. Yeah. What did you, you just add Adam, bro? Do you, do you believe in ghosts? No. No? Okay. No. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a pretty easy answer. It's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on this. Okay. Kind of just like, yeah. I mean, if, if, if they'd been around this whole time, I think we probably would have figured it out. We've been around for as long as ghosts have, <laughs> technically. <laughs> and so if we've been coexisting, I think we would actually like have something a little more tangible than, oh, my God. It's cold in the corner. Did you guys feel yeah, that? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, did you hear that creak while the house settled? Like, you know, like, <laughs> right. like, like, yeah. like, oh no, it must, it must be my grandma. You know, yeah. And like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> Jay, what about you? No, no, no. Yeah. So you pretty much just indulge, Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I, both it's, of the shows seem like they're entertaining. It's one of those things where it's like I can't prove they don't exist. I guess. Go, but, ghost yeah. stories to me are fascinating, and haunted locations are interesting, too, because there's so many of them, and they seem to be more or less random, um, because you think, like, oh, gosh, that, that that house looks like it's haunted, but there's no stories from it. But this place, there's just tons of stories from it, specifically. So it's like, has everyone been making up stories about this one place, while no one has decided to make up a story about that place? So there's a pattern. There are patterns. Mm-hmm. And there are haunted locations everywhere all over the world that go back for a long period of time. So I, I find all that interesting. I, Mike, I think I think you. I, I I believe you when you say you're skeptical, but I do I do think you desperately want to believe. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have a Mulder esque kind of quality coming coming from you. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, I've gone to lots of haunted locations um, and have experienced very little to nothing. Um, I was going to say you do the ghost tours and things yeah, yeah, yeah. like when you're like a, like out of town. Yes, and um, one of the more interesting ones was the Queen Mary. The, mm-hmm. the big ship in Long Beach because mm-hmm. um, you go go down to the like the belly of the ship where all the, the steam engines are been pulled out and it's this huge cavernous like rusty guts of the ship and there's all these stories like that ship rammed uh, like a World War II like vessel and killed like 10 sailors or something and so people hear like sounds of like people screaming and water and stuff there's all sorts of ghost stories um, but then you know, nothing it, happened. It sounds like, like, you know, it's like it's so some ghost tours are like just like regular tours, but like they're, you know, like you probably a lot of people just go to the Queen Mary because they want to see the, the big old boat. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. you add ghosts to it, <laughs> then you get a whole different audience. There's, like, there's you know, a profitability to it. Yeah. Where like New just, Orleans is full of those. Sure, like, you sure. know, yeah, because it's such an old kind of city. I went, on, I went on a terrible one where uh, I forget the name of the uh, the. Uh, the tour guide, but he dressed like a pirate, but he was just wasted off of his ass. Wow. And like we and you, we met him outside of a real estate office at like at like APM. Like he like he was like, oh yeah, just give me a second. And he comes back like with his pirate outfit. Was it his real estate office? That's yeah, I'm job. pretty sure he worked He's there. Like, I think, I think he totally forgot that he had like a whole tour like the coming up because <laughs> he was yeah. I called him Whiskey Pete because he was and Whiskey Pete like took us like like to a, like you know a couple of locations. Uh, I can't tell you how many times he said the words yellow fever <laughs> over and over and over again. And and uh, he took us. He took us to, literally to a parking lot at one point. He's like, "This was where a hospital used to be." And he sat there for about eight minutes talking about what used to be there. <laughs> and it's like, if you if you stand still long enough, you might hear the ghosts. And it's just like, you know, it's like it's it's a parking lot. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like I, it's like, honk honk, get out of the way. Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, like New Orleans is full of those kind of oh, things. Sure, sure. Looking yeah, at, yeah. but yeah, you like doing the little ghost tours. I, I, I they're fun. They're because uh, I like the Queen Mary's pretty famous and there's, yeah there's i mean a, it seems like it's already pretty like you yeah, know yeah it's, it's a cool ship um but there's a pool area that's not in use where uh, i guess a little girl drown at some point and i've seen numerous shows where they capture like like echoing little girl voice talking and so it's like okay cool They're down there don't hear shit yeah <laughs> and then, <laughs> You want to hear a little girl drowning? I want to hear I'm, I'm here to listen to little girls drown. <laughs> and even if I did hear it myself, I'd be like, this, did that get piped in through a speaker? You know, I'd be very skeptical. Or is it just some random sound? Something shifting in the... You never know. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, I, I want to have that experience somewhere where it's like, oh, that was neat. You know, I felt something touch my ear or, you know, something touched me and tapped my arm. 
and it's unexplainable. But um, whenever you go on one of these tours, there's always like a crackpot who's lying. Um, on the Queen Mary tour, there's this lady and she's like, you know, she, you could tell like she was just making everything up. She's like, last night in my room, I saw a man standing in the corner and he was wearing like an old timey bellboy uniform. And he walked through the wall. And we're like, no. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're lying. You want to be highlighted. You want to be special. You want to be the special person. That who gets, g- yeah, you're, goes to talk to you. You're attuned. You know, you're, you're attuned. You're special. Yeah. yeah you're Haley Joel you're Osment. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's... it's I, I'm I'm the one here trying to prove ghosts. <laughs> um, and I, I have no That's why I led with it. It's no, like so you believe in ghosts. Because <laughs> yeah. I find it all interesting, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I, it's in the same category as like alien conspiracies for me. Well, that, where it's it's fun to just like listen to these stories and documentaries. I, I do air quotes mm-hmm. and just suspend your disbelief for a little while. Yeah, what what is your thoughts on aliens then? Because yeah, how do you, how do you feel about aliens, Rich? Based. Yeah. I, I don't think they have visited us, but I do think it's highly, highly likely there is alien life elsewhere. Yeah, no, I know. I'm I'm with you on that. That's just that's just pure math. Yeah, but mm-hmm. but it's like um uh what do they call it? mass um not mass hysteria mass uh, uh, groupthink? No. <laughs> Mass hallucination, or you know, where it's like so ingrained mm-hmm. in our culture. Um, I, th- I, I think because it's coincidence. It's been going on for a long time that these pers- specific aliens, the Greys, mm-hmm. the big almond dark eyes, have a very specific look to them. Why does that keep popping up? Because somebody says it, and they've heard it before, and that becomes what you associate. And, and that's, that's what it's ingrained. That's in your head. That's what an alien's supposed to look like. And yeah. So then, when you have your hallucination, yeah, the odds are that's they pro- what you envision. The odds are they probably wouldn't like have like four limbs oh, and walk upright, and you know have like they, you know we, we think humanoid, you that humanoid. Yeah, 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 exactly. They could look like jellyfish or whatever, like that. You know, yeah. I think it's. I think once that kind of got ingrained in our culture, like that's what you dream that you got abducted by, and you know, yeah. And it hasn't been like all. Through history, I mean, it's only been since like television and radio, really. Well, unless you watch Ancient Aliens, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's cave drawings of uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm like I, I watch some of that kind of like I don't really do the ghost stuff, but I do the alien stuff in the same way that I like look at like the flat Earth stuff. You know, like I love watching those videos, like Hollow Earth, Flat Earth. Do you guys like get into these like kind of things at all? A little bit, and that's more just like you have to completely ignore reality to believe these. I things. I know, and that's what I, see. That's what I mean. Like, that, if I'm going to do crackpots, like I want real crackpots. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Well, flat Flat Earth that has its roots in in actually like religion. That's like a that's like a people want to get back to the ancient biblical view of the Earth. It's a it's one of those biblical literalist things like dinosaurs are, are yeah. real kind of kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I love that where the, it's like dinosaur like fossils are just put there to test our faith. Right. The god did that to like fuck with us essentially. It was like why what what, what, kind, of, what kind of god do you have? Like yeah. I, I think now they're trying to say that the dinosaurs died in the flood. Oh, Noah's Ark. Noah's, flood. Noah's Ark didn't have the dinosaurs. Oh. Um, Cuz they were too big for the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you put all these goddamn dinosaurs? Gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah. <laughs> and if you try to carbon date something, then God changes the numbers. <laughs> oh, I'm testing you. <laughs> Just six point five billion years ago. No. What was that one weird conspiracy video we watched about the person who thought the, oh, sky, the sky was fake? The sky is a is. It's like a big painting or something. What yeah, was the that? moon's a hologram. Like the also, like yeah, there's that one. They were trying to explain it because of like the the rainbow that you see in their lawn sprinkler. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Well, he was zooming in on the moon, and then he zoomed in on a stop sign. And because he could zoom in closer to the stop sign, that meant the moon was closer projected in the sky. It was like he didn't understand camera optics. Perspective. Or perspective. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I was like, yeah, the, the moon. Yeah, you could put your thumb over the moon, mm-hmm. like Paul, uh, Paul 13. Yeah. Um, but that does not mean your thumb is bigger than the moon. <laughs> so like, so, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. You don't understand. No, I, I know. I love like the like. This is my, probably my favorite part of YouTube is like of, like these crackpots and crazy people kind of just put up whatever they want. You know, oh, yeah. My my favorite. There's just this this video, a YouTube video, a woman on her lawn pointing a camera at her lawn sprinkler. 
And she's pointing at like the the you know the rainbow effect you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are they putting in our water? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I combined both those conspiracy videos yes, into one in my brain. Because yeah, the, the sprinkler thing was a different one. Yeah. She failed basic high school uh, uh, physics. Yeah. <laughs> Which is some effect. Yeah, yeah, never heard of refraction. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have this theory that, you know, like, the reason there are so many conspiracies, I think it's oddly comforting for people. Oh, totally. Like, yeah, like, yeah. It, 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 like it validates their own kind of worldview. And again, like, it's like that thing with the ghosts where it's like they're special. Right. I'm the one who's figured out that the world is flat and, you know, like Antarctica you, just wraps around us. But if you look at, like, the face value of all these, like, conspiracy theories, like, government is controlling you. There's aliens out there and I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, I think that's more comforting that there are these forces in control of things is more comforting than we're just on this rock and there's no one on the controls and yeah. this, just this empty, horrible universe. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's always kind of like a, like a, a supreme bad guy or like there's, someone's trying to trick you. So, yeah. someone, someone evil being in charge of something is better than nothing. Than, than <laughs> us being out of control of our own destiny. Yeah, like, I find you know, that completely. more comforting. Yeah, knowing that there's nothing out there and we're, we're we have free. We're all just floating around, bumping yeah, into each other just, and stuff. Do whatever. There's just boobs in charge of the government. They don't know what the fuck they're doing, and anything could happen. <laughs> it's like, it's true. I just love how like the moon's been a hologram since forever, and <laughs> and that equals profit. Yeah. Like why? Like why? Yeah, that's, that's my <laughs> favorite conspiracies are where it's like yeah, but why? Yeah. Like this is what you, this is your theory. Yeah, no, it's because because uh, NASA makes billions of dollars or something like that. It's like no, they don't. They keep on cutting their budget all the time. Look at it. Yeah. Scientists want you to believe the world is round because because fuck uh, you. That's why. Because um, <laughs> well, they want to mess with you. You see, um, <laughs> uh, once the world you believe the world's round, then they can. Um, Sell you balls. They can do lectures <laughs> about how the world is round. They can't do that if the world is flat. <laughs> <laughs> See? Like that's, that's the one about flat earth that gets me. Why cover this up? Yeah. Why? There's no reason why. Yeah. Someone's making a profit. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's making money off of it. That's why. Someone somewhere. How do you. How disputable proof as well that the earth is round. All that proof is fake. It's all staged. No, uh, yeah, yeah. And imagine actually uh, that was actually true. Like that one guy who reveals it and actually has hard evidence of it. Like that person would make lots of money and be super duper famous oh, and sure. stuff. You know, yeah. Like, like, yeah, just you think that like there's a lot of people who work for NASA and a lot of like, you know, like independent contractors and all that kind of like you think one of them like you think all of them just keep this secret you know and there's not one jerk off who gets drunk and the mouths off at a bar or something <laughs> like that like yeah like i mean come on I, a vindictive ex-wife or something like come on like yeah. I, I don't think people realize that you make your name in science by changing yes the, view. the way you see science yeah. yes so einstein isn't famous because he towed the line yeah, <laughs> Einstein is famous because he had this crazy fucking idea about space is curved and relativity. Yeah, and it was something radical and different, and that's why he's a big name. It's not because he said, "Yeah, no, Newton's right, and that's the only thing that can be right." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, and uh, yeah, but see, I think some of these crackpots think that they're being Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm the one who discovered that the world is flat. Because check this out. Like, you know, look at the horizon. I don't see a curve. Fuck you. <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm the best. I'm Albert freaking Einstein. Yeah. My favorite is I found this great channel recently. I can't remember the name of it right now. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all dedicated to Bigfoot. And this guy is hardcore believer. And I mean, he has like a hundred videos. See, I'm okay so with the Bigfoot people. Hour, ha, uh, <laughs> this guy. It's so, it's so, it's so harmless. You I'm know? okay with the Bigfoot people. <laughs> I'm okay with them. Yeah, no, no. Honestly, I think they're, I think they're harmless too. But it's also this guy just is like hundreds of them. And it's anywhere from two minutes, like half an hour long. Oh, and okay. just like, yeah. And just kind of just this, it's borderline pseudoscience. Like he's kind of using like, you know, some, you know, just biology and you know that kind of paleontology kind of things that kind of stuff but at the same time you could tell like he does not have a doctorate at all you know he's just a guy who's read a couple books you know yeah like you know and he knows he knows how to wikipedia things and he just puts it all together and i find it enthralling like you know oh, i just I, like, i'll just binge watch on a weekend or something like that my girlfriend will walk into the room she's you know bigfoot again i'm like yeah it's no it's not bigfoot, bigfoot again guy. it's not bigfoot again it's bigfoot still <laughs> oh god i 
I wish I could remember the guy's name, but like 10, 15 years ago, tell me if you remember this. Okay. There are these people that claim that they had a Bigfoot corpse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, they had- It was just you in a monkey suit. They, they, they had it like a- <laughs> <laughs> they had it in a cooler. Wait for it. They had it in a cooler full of like ice or something, and yeah. they had like like some pictures that they were posting. It was like a, they had a press release, and was, one of one of the big famous Bigfoot researchers spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy this Bigfoot corpse off of these people that you never actually saw. <laughs> no, yeah. he, they sent it to him. And it was a fucking Halloween costume. It was a goddamn gorilla. <laughs> it was an actual guy gorilla costume. <laughs> were, were they doing it for like a goof, or did they seriously oh, want people frauds. to believe? Yeah. Like, I think they were just fucking with the Bigfoot. That's what like, I'm wondering. Were they just trying yeah. to fuck with people that would actually believe that, or uh, were well, they trying to just I, con I, people? I think that depends upon whether or not they gave the money back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then you got that. You got that famous the Roswell autopsy. Footage. Oh, that oh, yeah. way oh. back when. Yeah. Someone painstakingly went and shot it on film and made this rubber costume. Yeah, which actually looks pretty good for the time. Like, yeah. you know, it was like, yeah, for the, it was like in the 90s or like yeah, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, so like autopsy. Yeah. And they, I mean, they, they got like a Fox special out of it, didn't they? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. got a bunch of specials. They got a bunch of specials all over the world about that. They they mm. made bank off of that. But oh, it's yeah. conspiracy upon conspiracy because so, someone made a fake thing so that you could make conspiracy shows about it to <laughs> make money about it. Well, was, you, do you think Fox gave a fuck whether or not it was real? They, they Fox gave a fuck whether or not it was there was enough there where they could claim they thought it could be real so many shows were made about that footage yeah and then someone like looked at the actual yeah. film print and they're like oh this was manufactured six weeks ago this yeah. film footage well actually, i think they caught i think it was like a, a watch somebody was wearing oh really that wasn't manufactured yet um, oh okay. yeah, that's how they get you yeah it was something it wasn't the film they, it they wasn't the film it was the, something in the footage that okay. but i mean we're still like talking about that special like 30 years later so obviously they did something <laughs> right yeah. looking at it's a, a well. They've they've basically been proven as frauds now. Oh no, totally. Yeah, but I'm just the, saying. It's like yeah, the guy but, who made it is saying, "Oh no, the film was too degraded." But there's one frame in there that's from the real original footage. I had to recreate it. <laughs> that happened. I didn't hear yeah, about that. Yeah, no, he's the, the the person. One of the well, at least one of the people who made that is claiming, "Well, I had to reshoot actual footage because it was in such bad shape." But there's all... a little bit. There's one second of real footage in there somewhere. Somewhere. Find it, and I'm it's only an bringing that up now that I've been <laughs> proven that, now, to be a fraud. Now that I've been caught, I'm only bringing that up now. <laughs> He's got some bills to pay. Because <laughs> also, the, I remember Fox had that special about uh, the faking of the moon landing one. Mm, like that was actually kind of like yeah, that was. I remember that actually kicked off like kind of the modern day like you know because yeah. there was always kind of like funny speculation like you know people talking about it's like ah, I bet you Stanley Kubrick did yeah. it like you know yeah. Uh, um, but like I remember that one from the '90s. Like mm. you can actually date like the modern. That's another one of those like YouTube like like rabbit holes. Mm. Like I'll, oh, I'll fall into is the moon landing stuff, <laughs> which is pretty great. Yeah. So so do you believe we've been to the moon? Yes, I do. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? I believe the Stanley Kubrick theory. Yeah, of course. How, yeah. How can you refute it? How? Yeah. How can you? <laughs> A flag can't just float around in on the moon like yeah. it's uh, yeah. you know, like it would in the wind on Earth. Yeah, they wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> These NASA scientists. What are <laughs> who was that? Who was the astronaut who said he saw aliens? Is that Buzz Aldrin? The... I don't. No, know. no, that was. But it was. It was one of the more obscure kind of like ones. I mean, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, really, how many how many astronauts can you name? Uh, oh boy, I want to say it was one of the Buzz Ap Aldrin, Apollo. Neil Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh God. Yeah. See. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri Gagarin. Yeah, Yuri Gagarin. Uh, Who's that guy Michael, that spent a lot of time in space? Yeah. Uh, the third Apollo Lar Lemonhead Like Larson? Or yeah. or something like that. He was the loneliest guy uh, he uh, in the he in the to universe. Stay in the capsule. Yeah, he had to, he had to rotate. He wasn't. Yeah. He went to the moon, but wasn't able to get like he yeah. had to pick them up. Right. So at one point, he was as far away from people as he possibly could be because he was yeah. on the other side of the moon from where like his two buddies were, <laughs> and the Earth was way over there. So he was technically as isolated a person as like as possible at that point. Mm. The loneliest man ever. I think it was Larson, something like that. Michael something. Yeah, actually, yeah. It was it was a pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, I remember actually had more of a straightforward name. It was like yeah, like Smith or Scott or something. This, uh, or I could think of some others. But see, obviously, we can't even think I'm of that. Trouble though. Well, let's not forget Tom Hanks. Tom, I was just going to yes. do that. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, Lowell. That was that was one of them, right? Lowell. Lo Lovell. 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 Thank you. Yeah, that's who Tom Hanks played. Yeah. 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 Mae Jemison. 
And there was a guy who just spent like a year at the International Space Station and his bones got all brittle. Yeah. Looking at all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. Dean, uh, the teacher. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. Oh, the challenger. Uh, yeah. McAfee. McAf- 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 McAfee. Yes. Ma- yeah. Christina McAfee. Christine McAfee. She's mm. the teacher that went up. She was an yeah, official yeah. astronaut. Right. But yeah, that counts, though. I mean, um, she she yeah. dressed like an astronaut. Should, should we have ended when we were talking about the showbiz pizza bear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's pretty sad too. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, God! That's a Jeffrey Dahmer joke too. Is it? Yeah. yeah. What kind of shampoo does Jeffrey Dahmer use? Pert. <laughs> 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 you fucking dork! <laughs> you think that's? I think it's. I think it's how we're gonna end it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, I had this like an old time shampoo from like the eighties. <laughs> Perch, per, per plus. Yeah, that's why I probably would have used. Wait, but I don't think they even make it anymore. <laughs> Yeah. All right, uh, plug your stuff. Give me your, your 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 twitters and your instas and all that kind what of the fun fuck's stuff. What's a Twitter? What's the, an insta? Yeah, the the the, the tweety things yeah. in the in the the Jay, picture east you one. You all this information. Just go to YouTube and look up Red Letter Media, and then you can find lots of people stealing our content. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'll see tons of videos that, that are biased, but are posted by us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Click on those. <laughs> <laughs> they need the ad revenue. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, yeah, do anything else like you know, like any, like I said, any socials, anything like that? Rich Evans, you, you probably have some private ones. Would you would you I, mind I sharing them with the world? I stay far away from social media. <laughs> I'm a I'm a fucking hermit. Yeah, no, it, you know what it is? You have one of those like asking for it faces. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> asking for it faces. Yeah, just asking for trouble. You know, ask, oh, asking. Okay. Ask, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should you should start a Twitter, Rich, and just oh tweet god, just no, the what worst things? Twitter is the dumbest thing. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, is, rap, we're is, wrapping up. It is up. an awful place. Yeah, we yeah. have Roar to watch. You know, yeah. <laughs> we got some movies to watch. We got some movies to watch. You got, got a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's you know, all you want to really plug? Yeah. I would yeah. just say thanks for having us on. Oh, no, thanks, thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, en- I enjoy Milwaukee. No, it's freaking it's still cold. It's May. You fucking liar. It's fucking <laughs> cold. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I enjoy my time here. But yeah, like I said, it's it's May and it's freaking 40 degrees. Mm-hmm. I don't know what... Yes, yeah. it's freezing rain. I'm glad we shot that yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the one God. day it wasn't supposed it's to rain. So yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we shot some stuff, which you'll probably see. Well, yeah, it'll probably be out before this. So yeah, we, we pointed all over Milwaukee. And yeah, so I got to see your, your, your fantastic... Fantastic town. We shot it the uh, a little bit before our one week of summer that we get here. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. It was good stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do an outro later because uh, you know, because it's awkward if you guys are looking at me when I'm doing it. I want to yeah. talk about you guys behind your back, <laughs> <laughs> assholes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that guys. Thanks a lot for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, You're all right, cool. All right. So that was hilarious. Haha. <laughs> Am I right? So, um, yeah, I, I think I put all the info at the end of this episode. Sean's standing right next to me. Actually, no, he's sitting right next to me. And, uh, yeah, you know, he told me I already did the outros before. So, I don't know why I'm doing this. Okay, uh, enjoy the voicemail. Bye. me, Mr. Plinkett. And you know what? Today is the 20th anniversary of Star Wars The Phantom Menace. So I'd like to say, now this is podcasting. Ah, ah. Seriously, though, I called to say that I like your show. I don't love it. I said I like it. Anyway, I have to go now. My cat is scratching at my balls. Oh shit, Macaulay, I, 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 I really didn't mean to call you, but hey, while I'm here, if, um, I don't know, like if you've got the time on, on your podcast, if you just, uh, I don't know, just let my girlfriend Allie know that I really love her, that'd be, that'd be super swell. 
Um, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you be right now. You're a, you're a good guy. P.S. My name's Chris. Ugh. Uh, it's awkward, but bye. Hi, uh, this is Macaulay Gulkin. I just wanted to call to say hi to Macaulay Gulkin. Uh, so, hey, what's up, bro? What's going on? Just, uh, just wanted to just say hi to myself. <sighs> hey, bookster. Man, I love your show. You should call my show. It's Hog Story, 430-201-4841. I love you. A lot. Find me, gag me, take me to the bunny ranch. You are wicked, Lumberjack! Oh my god. <laughs>